Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to program a part. We have two ways of programming. We can use a profile mode or we can use a um, numeric mode. And uh, I'm going to show you the profile mode first. In another video I'll show you the, the numeric version. So I'm going to start making a new program. I'm going to hit EC Profiler Project. Okay, and give it a name. Okay, hit the green check mark. And we're going to keep it in the projects folder. So we're going to OK. So in this uh, example, I'm going to assume you already calibrated some material. So I won't go through that. And we're going to open up. We're going to type in a material here. OK. And um, I already have calibrated material. So, so let's say for simplicity's sake we have we're going to be using this combination of tools um, the thickness material steel 14 gauge <coughs> and um, and we're gonna say a bend width say six inches okay so all this is answered I got green check marks everywhere so I'm already moved ready to move to the next step uh, right up here you're gonna see create profile um, You'll only see this if you create a profile project. If you create a numeric, you will not see this button here. So we're going to create our profile. We're going to get this screen view here, and we're going to draw a profile. We're just going to draw a rough shape. You don't have to sweat the scale too much. We can correct that with dimensions later. Um, so what we'll do is, this, first off, you can see here, we can turn the grids on and off if, if you don't like seeing those. Uh, they can be helpful to a degree. I can set my grid spacing here. If I click on the actual number, it'll come up, and maybe I want my grid spacing to be half inch. Okay, and I do that with this one as well because that quarter inch is a little on the small side. Okay, and then if I turn this one, I'll see angles every 15 degrees. Okay, so I'm ready to start drawing my profile, and you'll note here that my first point is already in place, so I don't have to worry about clicking my first point. I'm just going to start clicking on where I want my second point to be. So again, I'm not going to worry about scale here. I'm just going to click. You see it draws my first line, and I could use these guys as a guideline for doing an angle. Okay, so let's say we go to here. We'll do another one here, and out flange. Okay, so I rough my my profile here. <clears throat> if I'm in the middle of this and I don't like what I just did, I have my little yellow orange uh, back arrow here. You can click on that and it'll undo the last line. You can undo all the way to the beginning if you like. Okay. Um, you notice how I drew from this point onto this point. I could also click on this point and continue drawing a profile from that point on. So you can see here like add to it okay you can do that it's but in my example here I don't need to just want you to see that you could do that um, you do have some controls over here on your view panning and zooming and rotating and so on but as you can see it's not too necessary um, so let's say I'm happy with my profile right now I'm gonna hit my green check mark here and my view changes so now I've got uh, my part, my profile with dimensions on it. And um, now I can edit these dimensions to my liking. So I make up my flanges one inch, for instance. I'll make these two inch big. Okay, so as I type in my numbers, it updates. I got my 135, so that can be a 45 degree uh, angle on that. And maybe make this a little bigger, six inch. So let's say my part is drawn now. Yeah, if you look down here, you'll see I have some dimensioning tools. My pencil tool here is actually to edit these numbers. Okay, that's what that indicates. This guy, if I hit this light bulb here, it's to make numbers hide or to show or hide numbers, basically. Um, so if I if I click on this and it says here select dimensions to hide let's say I don't want to see my angles for whatever reason okay so I'll go and hide all my angles okay and now I hit this again let me go back out 
I can click this on and you can see my angles are shown again so I can turn them on and off okay for whatever reason that it is it can be handy if you got a lot of dimensions you want to clean it up make it easier to see that could be useful <clears throat> um, these other tools are to add dimensions okay um, these you may want say for instance I want to add a dimension that shows me my overall width okay in some some cases that make make sense and mind you when I'm, I'm, I'm using a mouse on a desktop right now but normally this is a touch uh, interface so I don't have to click in my case with a mouse right onto this point I have to put my finger basically you see where my mouse is let me do it on a point that's a little easier I don't have to be right on the point to select it I'm in the vicinity and I'm on this side of the point it, it sees that as the closest and it'll select it so you don't have to be too picky about selecting it just get your finger in the vicinity closest to that point and click and it'll select that okay so I just selected my second piece, my second point, and my third click is to place the dimension. Okay, and uh, I can unselect it. Whoops, go back. Um, so at that point, it, it is done. My, my dimension is placed. Now, let me show you something here. If I go to my little pencil tool here, you know if I click on that I can edit this dimension but when I place these types of dimensions I can click on it but nothing happens okay so I can't edit those dimensions but I can drive this dimension by editing the, any of these dimensions okay so it's like a reference dimension okay we'll use these reference dimensions also for say if you want to track an inside dimension say the height from this point to the inside of this point because our defaults are on the outside uh, you would use these for that or a dimension that shows my total height which would be from here to here or maybe you'd want it from the inside of this dish to the outside here for that vertical dimension that's what you would use these for so you're not controlling it with these dimensions but you can at least alter your 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 uh, your overall dimensions by changing the main ones that are placed and use your reference to figure out where you stand okay so that's how you can alter your um, dimensions and then we also with this pencil here we can also alter the um, let me see we could also alter this angle dimension exact same way as we did the the linear dimensions um, and when I'm doing this okay right over here this is my my flattened length my flat length okay 11.864 based on the database that's in this machine that's the flat that we should be cutting with the tools that we're using to achieve these dimensions and ha have the overall dimensions um, so this is important <coughs> okay so so since we've got our profile all done um, the next step you would do is you would do a auto sequence I'm going to click on that and it starts going through and it starts first it's calculating tools and segments then it's going to calculate the sequence and then the gauging that's what it was showing in there and it comes up with this view when it's all done so I can hit my play button right here and simulate my bends and find out if I'm going to collide uh, it will give you a message if you were going to have an accident and it'll show it to you okay so at that point you know everything looks good I can go back and forth on my bends here to check out the different ones um, if I wanted to go back and just do a manual sequence I could do so here I'll do another video to show you how to do that um, and over here again it's a few controls which aren't a big deal and um, so in this case my profile is all programmed I'm happy with what I got and I would hit my green check mark over here okay do a little processing and then it's at step four so you can see I got four bands I can cycle through my four bands you can see the 3d's being represented here as as it's changing okay and all my steps here will update as I go through my different steps uh, I can change these if I want to after I've done my profile I can alter a lot of these other parameters I'm going to do a different video that's going to get into the specifics of all these parameters that we can change it'll do its own for the most part you take defaults but you can fine-tune and tweak with these 
Okay, so now we've gotten all our parameters set. We're liking what we see. And, um, and at this point, you would go to step five and run the program. I can't show you that right now because I'm not attached to a machine. This is just a desktop software. Um, but you would go into that mode and you'd start working the pedal and uh, making your parts. So you can see the program is pretty simple on this uh, EC profiler. And uh, I look forward to some more videos that go into some details about doing manual sequences and some other details. Okay, thank you, and that's it.